Hey there, I was teaching a class earlier this week and a student asked, how do you know if you have mindfulness skills? Um, which is a great question and I answered her and I thought I'd make a video about it too. So when I'm training people in mindfulness, we're working to develop three skills. Um, the skills are concentration, sensory clarity, and equanimity. So I can go through what each of those skills is and how you can tell if you have it. So you can assess your own skill level and your own practice and go, oh yeah, I'm checking the box. I do have those. Okay, first one, <clears throat> concentration. So concentration is the ability to focus on what you want to focus on when you want to focus on it. You will know <laughs> you have concentration skills if you are able to do that. So whether it's in uh, work or your art practice, if what you want to do, you're able to stick with it um, for a long time without being pulled away by external distractions or internal impulses and urges to leave the work, um, if you're able to stay with it, then you have high concentration. You also will know you have high concentration if, if you are doing the work and when you are doing it, it feels somewhat pleasurable, even if the work that you're doing isn't pleasurable. So for example, I would not find, like I wouldn't go like, ooh, scanning a spreadsheet for um, a calculation error <laughs> wouldn't be inherently pleasurable for me. I go, eh, it's kind of boring, but I'll do it. But if I go to it with high concentration skills, so if I'm scanning, um, if I have high concentration skills, it will still be pleasurable, right? Because it's just feels really good to concentrate. So if you find that you are enjoying work more, tasks that you didn't like are somewhat enjoyable, even though you haven't changed them, they haven't got more interesting, they've become more pleasurable because you have risen your concentration skills. I didn't know that I had increased my concentration skills through, through mindfulness. Like I wasn't sitting and then all of a sudden I was like, I can <laughs> really concentrate. What happened is that um, I was writing. So before when I would write stories, when I had low concentration, and I definitely did, um, thoughts would come up like this is silly or I would get stuck and instead of working through it I would just give up and be like there's no point <laughs> you have no depth um, or any sort of external thing that happened I'd be like okay I'll go fix that and so although I had this internal need internal want of wanting to write a story and work through you know the problems that came up in the story my low concentration didn't allow me to like be a master in that work. But um, I found myself one day I was writing and I had a moment where I did hit a block and then I just kept going and I was like, oh, I'm doing it, I'm writing and it was pleasurable. And did I figure out that story that day? No, I didn't, but I stuck with it. And it's like my concentration skills were higher than the distractions that used to pull me away from my work. So that's how you'll know you have concentration, right? Focus on what you wanna focus on when you wanna focus on it. Number two, sensory clarity. So sensory clarity is the ability to untangle and appreciate sensory events, uh, specifically things that you can see and hear and feel internally and externally, right? So um, you will know <laughs> that you have high sensory clarity because the life just feels more enriching. You're often feeling more enjoyment um, and, and it's not that like you've changed position in life. You're just feeling and noticing the details of things. Um, like you might, like often when clients first learn this, they'll be like, I never noticed that there was birds um, outside my window at dinner time. 
And it's really simple that they just never heard it because they were like stuck in, in planning or scheming or stuff in their head that they weren't aware of like, oh, what's really going on? And then when things would come up, um, so if, if a thought comes up that often, you know, in the past maybe held you back, if it's no longer, if it's coming up, but your reaction to it isn't to like believe it and mull it over, if it's to break it up and be like, oh, it's, <laughs> that's just a thought, uh, and not letting it settle and have some power so it's untangled, then you'll know you have sensory clarity. It's kind of like walking around in like hyper color. <laughs> like everything feels extra alive. You're noticing the details that no one else is noticing them. Um, yeah, so it's, and it's often, often you'll feel lighter and happier just by doing that. Um, yeah, that sensory clarity. It's such a, it's like such a beautiful one. And it's also, I think, sensory clarity is that if you notice, I think also you can, if you're noticing things about your own experience, but you're also noticing the experiences of others in a new way, that can also be a sign that you've got some heightened sensory clarity. So you're aware of like the mood of the room. Now, as you develop, so if you've got like off the chart sensory clarity, often that you, you, you can reach a level where you like, you go past just the basic level of I'm just seeing things, I'm just hearing things, I'm breaking them apart. And you start to see the contour and the connections of things that are quite big and quite abstract. And if you have some clarity in there as well, um, that, can sh that can mean you have some heightened sensory clarity. Third skill, equanimity. So equanimity means that it's really, <laughs> in a nutshell, like your ability to let things go and go with the flow. So you have equanimity if you are comfortable in the don't know space, that you're okay in like, ah, in this moment. And that you're not spending and being pulled away by things that could happen, right? Like, I'll be happy when I land this thing. What's my next project once I do this, right? So if you're always in, I don't get to give myself a break until then, <laughs> then you probably don't have equanimity. Um, if you're always there, right? And then if you also, or opposite to that, are stuck in the past, so you're mulling over and over um, repeated scripts to yourself, things that people said to you, replaying things that are holding you back. If you're living in that world more than you are present, then you don't have equanimity. If you are more aware of what's happening in the current moment, you know, and then going with the flow, and it doesn't mean that things happen and you have no reaction, right? It just means that things can pass through you without sticking, without um, old reactions going, right? So if you have equanimity, the best way you know you have equanimity is people describe it as they go, um, well, actually someone else, I think in the class that I was teaching, described it well, she just said, I don't, I didn't realize how much time I spent worrying about the future. And this helped me to see how often I was doing that, which is sensory clarity. And then she said, and so I'm just, you know, paying attention to what is now, which is equanimity. And she says, it feels like she feels lighter. She feels happier. She feels like there's more, uh, more space. So you'll know you have equanimity if things that used to really irk you <laughs> and just like wrench, you know, I would feel in my stomach like the things that used to be like, ooh, or instant anger or sadness or shame or whatever it was. If those things don't hit as hard, then you'll know you'll have equanimity. And often you're just like with great equanimity, uh, you have just great ease 
and happiness. <laughs> so that's how you'll know. You'll be like, I feel really good and nothing really changed and I'm okay with not knowing, right? Um, yeah, so those are the three mindfulness skills um, yeah, that you can develop. And those are the three, you know, things to look out for to know if you have those skills. <sighs> Thanks for watching. I hope that was educational for you. Okay, bye. Oops.